Hi, my name is Adrian Sue. Um, I was born and raised in San Jose. Um, so I grew up in the area um, and uh, culturally um, I identify as, you know, being Asian or Chinese. Uh, my parents, so heritage wise, my family is from Hong Kong. So we're Cantonese, um, you know, pronouns, she, her, um, and uh, I went to college in Boston and the East Coast um, in a small town called Wellesley. Uh, went to a school called Babson College uh, for entrepreneurship. Um, gave me a lot of skills and tools, a wide range of understanding businesses at, at a whole. Um, not anything specialized, but um, those tools that you learned uh, from entrepreneurship carry over into the day-to-day -day job, with, whether you know I was in hospitality to begin with, um, and then went over into technology. Um, and uh, today I work in payments technology. So anything that you purchase online uh, ut utilizes a payments gateway. Um, and that's what I focus on um, in um, connecting people um, in the way they pay and purchase things online today. <laughs> um, so as a child, um, I witnessed my parents decorating the home. Um, I don't really remember like my first experience with Lunar New Year. Um, for whatever reason, I just remember that like every year during New Lunar New Year's, we would gather with my mom's family and my dad's family and we would like have dinner um, with our relative relatives. And then we would see like our cousins and stuff and we would just kind of play like as normal. Um, the only difference that I really remembered was that you, when you saw your relatives, you would greet them with like different uh, New Year's sayings and things like that and then at the end of it they would give you red envelopes and um, I don't think you truly understood what it meant as a child because you know um, as a child I think what you're interested in is like toys and stuff um, so when they give you a red envelope with money in it you don't really know what to do with it um, but as you got a little bit older and you realize that there were things that you could do with this money then you get like really excited um, so that's what I truly remember um, as a child. And then as you kind of get older, at least for myself, um, I learned kind of more of the traditions and like the superstition. Um, so a couple of things um, is, you know, you want to clean the house so that, you know, it's free from dust and things. And then they say it brings good luck um, for the remainder of the year. Um, and then, you know, uh, <laughs> Um, there are other things like, okay, you don't wash your hair, like the day of New Year's, you kind of have to do all that stuff before, um, uh, because when you wash your hair, um, on New Year's day, what it considers is that you're washing away, like all your luck. Um, so, I mean, those are a couple of superstitions, um, but today, you know, I, I live with my husband and we would also decorate our home just kind of to bring the, the holiday spirit, but also that it um, allows for like the good fortune spirits to kind of come to your home. So one, that's why you want it to be clean. Two, you want it to be decorated with like red things to, to um, get, get those spirits to come. Um, but also, um, Another thing uh, is you want to leave the lights on. So, you know, on New Year's, we usually leave the lights on in the living room. Um, kind of a waste of electricity, so eco-friendly, not so much, but um, it's one of the Chinese superstitions that we have, which is, you know, uh, when you have the lights on, then the good spirits will also know to come. Uh, one other thing that I do truly remember for Chinese New Year's is that my parents would put off these little firecrackers like in front of the, the home, so in front door, and I don't remember if that was to like ward off bad spirits or just to kind of initiate the start of Chinese New Year, um, but I also noticed in the neighborhood where you have a lot of um, Asians in the community that it would kind of happen, and then 
what I remember thinking that it was embarrassing would be like, if anybody who didn't celebrate Chinese New Year would hear these firecrackers going off in front of your front door and be like, what's going on? Um, but, but that's something that I truly remember. And then you kind of leave, um, the, the firecrackers leave like these red papers um, as debris and you kind of leave it on your front door. Um, and that's like a part of like the New Year's celebration that I recall. Um, I don't do that because I'm scared of like hurting myself, but um, it was nice like just remembering like my, my family doing that. There are a couple of Asian clubs that I was a member of and um, this is a little bit off topic and it's kind of interesting, but one of the major talks that I went to as a part of orientation, um, I remember the speaker saying that, you know, you should make all kinds of friends. Um, like, and, and I guess as a, as a part of that is to expose you to other heritages and like other people's cultures. And so that's what I really did initially, like make friends with like, all different backgrounds and stuff like that. But it was it was kind of strange to me because by the end of college, um, most of my good friends were still Asian. Um, and I think, you know, to the point of Chinese New Year's, it's that there, there are things that you grew up with um, that you find a, a connection to. And that's kind of what it was for me. Um, so to, to, your, to answer your question of whether or not like I was still able to celebrate Chinese New Year's, yes, um, definitely. Um, I think for me in Boston, it was harder to get some of like the decorations and stuff for um, where we lived um, on campus was a little bit hard to get to um, some of those markets. So I didn't actually have like decor to put up, um, but in terms of just celebrating, having good food, um, things like that, um, we still had that. Um. Um, our family is, uh, I, would, I would say that like when we celebrated at my grandparents' place, um, then it would be a little bit more traditional. Um, so I would say a portion of my family is Buddhist. So um, as a part of New Year's, what they would do is they would have vegetarian um, food. Um, but, you know, uh, across different, um, I guess, Chinese backgrounds, um, there's different kinds of foods that people would eat. And I would say, you know, it's like Chinese traditional like Chinese, like meat dishes, fish dishes. But the one thing that I would really say is that um, Chinese are, are kind of superstitious. Um, so there are certain phrases um, in Chinese that kind of match to like the food. And so um, I guess one of the things that really stand out is there's a phrase in Chinese where it says, every year you have an abundance. And so how you, well, how I say it in Cantonese is ni nin yao yu. And yu is like abundance. And then, but <clears throat> when you say the word a little bit differently, so if you pronounce it slightly differently, it's the word fish is yu. And so traditionally they would like steam a fish and you would have some fish and it's because of the saying that you know if you have fish then every year you have an abundance um and then like around the house like we would have like lots of tangerines or oranges um because the word for orange or um tangerine is like luck so you would kind of have that on display um I would I wouldn't say we would eat it as food, um, but you know you just kind of have it there as a symbol of of luck for New Year's. It's because it's something that my parents um, brought. It, it's like a tradition that my parents and my family brought me up with, and I don't want to lose that identity. Um, so for me, I was I mean I was born in the U.S., um, so I'm an American-born Chinese, um, but we went to Chinese school um, so I can speak 
Cantonese and Mandarin, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, I do feel that there are some, you know, so as a part of like tradition and like my heritage, I think, you know, if, if I don't continue to do this, then I won't really, like, if I ever have children, I won't pass it down to them. So if I continue to do this and I understand the importance, then hopefully one day, like when I have kids, like they will also understand like where these traditions come from. Like, um, so it's kind of like, you know, if people write history books um, to document that, it's kind of nice to be able to have that in your own family um, and, and then like celebrate these traditions so it can kind of carry on like your family's history, I guess. Everything kind of sparked with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, I believe. And then now there's, um, I don't know what the movement is called exactly, but there's like been some hate crimes with like Asians too. And I, I mean, in general, as a whole, I just think it's important for us to, you know, stick together. Um, so I, for, for me, um, I understand why there's a certain classification, but personally, I, I think that the more we talk about the issues that we face um, in, in our communities, because in our communities, we're not just like, you know, Asians, Latinos, or Blacks, Indians, you know? Um, I think as a community, we, we all function together. So the more that we're able to have these um, difficult discussions together, um, I think, it, in in general, it's just going to be better for us as a whole. Um, I think that there are certain topics that might be very specific, and I think that it's it makes a lot of sense for us to learn those things, um, to just kind of have a background on what's going on. Um, you know, I <laughs> I'm just thinking back to my time in college and we had to take a course on um, like culture. Um, and it was, it's a little bit embarrassing for me to think about now, but they, they talked about blackface in one of the, the topics that we had. And I, I had no idea what it was at the time. And I, you know, I don't think I was exposed to it. We never talked about it in school. So, I, I mean, now I feel like more than ever, I think these things need to be brought to the surface. We can't just kind of cover it up and say, okay, that's in the past, like that's not happening. Like we haven't experienced it. We, we haven't seen it happening now. Um, but I think that that in turn, like knowing these, I guess, horrible things that have happened in the past will help us to become better people. So if there was a point in time where people felt like we shouldn't talk about these things because, you know, it's so bad and it's not happening now, we don't need to expose our children to that, then I think that that's why I think that more than ever, we should have these open um, conversations on it. So happy Lunar New Year to all of you, whether you celebrate it or not. Um, in my um, heritage, or Cantonese background, the way that we would say happy Chinese New Year is Sun Lin Fai Lao. Um, and then, you know, uh, as to end it, you know, wherever life may lead you guys, um, just know that it, it's okay to not know where you want to go. I did not know that I would end up in working for payments, um, but every experience, um, leads to something more in the end. Um, so it's okay to not know, um, but just just do your best in your day to day and um, you know where your life leads you, you'll learn the experiences that you gather um, from everything that you do on a day to day basis will carry forward with you um, in you know the progression of you know where you go at the end.